It's been an honor to be in Madison this past few days for Grit TV. I left Sunday night as one more line was forming outside the State House, this time of people entering two by two, four by four, at a time when they thought the State House was in danger of being emptied at any moment. With me, John Nichols, who's been at the center of this all week. He, among other things, is the national correspondent for The Nation magazine, a regular contributor to Grit TV, and one of the editors of the Capital Times there in Madison. I asked him the significance of that gathering Sunday night. The bottom line is that people see this as their capital. It always has been an incredibly open capital. We never have police officers at the door. This is uncommon. Uh, and so uh, people have come from all over the community. As I walked up the line, I saw parents from my kids' school. I saw uh, you know people work at neighborhood stores. Uh, we probably got hundreds here, maybe even thousands on the different entrances lined up just to go into the capital and say, this is our capital, uh, this political dispute, not an economic dispute, not a labor dispute, this political dispute should not change our open and transparent government in Wisconsin. Quickly, the situation that people are in is not so different from where they were a couple of weeks back in that the governor has the votes. He's probably going to figure out how to get this legislation through. The 14 Democrats are still out of state, but eventually they're going to come back. And yet, People are still standing here. People yeah. are still protesting. This is about something more than the pragmatics of politics. Sure. Uh, this, this struggle transitioned very, very early on. Uh, maybe even at the beginning. The people who brought uh, folks out, the first rallies were organized by the Teaching Assistance Association, not a big muscular union, but grad students at the university. And uh, the solidarity that was shown even in the first days was coming not just from other unions, although that was surely there, but also from students, thousands of students who walked up to be here with their teachers from neighborhoods across the community, from uh, our pizza places. And you know, I saw signs today that said this is the pizza revolution. Yesterday, when 125,000 people were marching around the Capitol, many of them had signs printed by one of our local pizzerias, uh, a business printing signs saying, you know, Walker, it's time to go. And so the bottom line is that this has transitioned into a struggle for Wisconsin and maybe even a struggle for America. And the important thing to understand, too, is that this is not something new. Labor struggles historically often went to those core free speech, freedom of assembly struggles. Eugene Victor Debs was jailed uh, often because he stood up not for labor but for constitutional rights, for the basic liberties that we should value in this republic. And that's really what these people are out here for today. They, they know that their presence in the Capitol probably won't change Scott Walker's opinion tonight. He won't uh, be visited by the better angels of his nature. But um, that, that the presence has meant something and that the continued presence will mean something. As long as Wisconsinites are out en masse in thousands and thousands, uh, not just in Madison, but in communities across the state, what it means is that there is a resistance to this bill, to the transformation of this state into something that it shouldn't be. And that resistance empowers Democratic legislators to be bolder, more courageous than they have been. It empowers people around the state to stand up. I think, frankly, it empowers people around the country and even around the world. Uh, and I can tell you, yesterday, a teacher came up to me and she said, I'm so glad they started this fight here because we really know a lot about democracy. We really know a lot about exercising our rights and we're not going to let anybody tell us to stop.